Hello, and welcome back to Tuesday Tech Tips with Mr. Panic. Today, I'm going to show you how to use Google Drawings to make a comic strip. Now, if you don't have access to Google Drawings, you can also create a comic strip using a piece of paper and a pencil if you like. Google Drawings is a very powerful tool, but it does not get the attention that Google Docs, Sheets, or Slide gets. However, for those of you that use Google Classroom, you might have noticed it as one of the four programs you can work with when you create an assignment. Since most people are not as familiar with Google Drawings, I will first show you how to get to it. You can easily open a new Google Drawing from the address bar in your internet browser. Click on the plus and type in Drawings. Google. And there you have it. As I mentioned before, this is a really fun and interesting program that can help you create lots of different illustrations, graphs, and charts. But for today, we are going to do something fun with Google Drawings. We are going to use the shapes available to create a comic strip. For your comic strip, you can get as detailed or as simple as you like. For this example, I'm going to keep it simple and have the characters tell a silly joke. It's always a good idea to have what your characters are talking about written down beforehand so you can make sure your drawings match what you would like to say. I will begin by drawing the first rectangle that my characters appear and interact in. The rectangles in a comic strip are known as panels. To create my first panel, we will click on the shape icon at the top of our screen. Now, if this is your first time using Google Drawings, take a minute to look at all the different shapes you can draw and use. Shapes, arrows, callouts, equation, oh my. Sorry, I got a little distracted by too many cool tools. I think we were talking about it using the exciting shape. Ah yes, rectangles. Now, in Google Drawings, there's actually nine different rectangles for you to use. but we're going to use the basic rectangle to create our first panel. So I click on the rectangle shape, my mouse shape changes, and now I can click and drag to draw my first rectangle or panel for my screen. Now when you draw with any of the shape tools, it will fill the shape with a light color blue the first time you use it. You can change the color of the shape by keeping it selected. Notice the little squares? Those squares are called the handles. When you notice those, you can actually then take your mouse and click on the pink hand, which is called fill color, at the top of your screen. You can then change that to any color you would like. I'm gonna change this fill panel, or this first panel, to white. If at any time you don't like the size, you can always resize your shape by moving your mouse to any of those handles and your mouse will turn into two arrows and you can resize it to make it a different size if you wish. Or if you decided that you didn't really like that shape, you can actually delete it and start over again right? by pressing your backspace key. In this case, I want to go ahead and create that first panel, like so, and change it to white as I did before. For the first panel, I'm needing to draw my characters. Now you could spend a lot of time and create some really cool characters of shapes if you wanted, but we can save that for another Tech Tips episode. I will choose the smiley face just to make it easier, and I'm going to change the color right away. I'm going to go up to shapes, and go over here, and choose smiley face, and draw a smiley face. And move it where I like it and I'm gonna change the color right away I like that kind of building block color shape you know rhymes with Lego if you've created a smiley face that you really like and you want to do that again and you don't want to worry about well is it exactly the same size you can always use control D that's right control D to duplicate and that makes an identical shape that you can move around and place where you'd like. In this case, I have two identical smiley faces, 
on my first panel. Right. Now, you might want to also make the shapes a little bit different from each other, so you could add different uh, effects or different things to your shapes to make them stand out. So I'm going to go up to shapes, and I'm going to add a little something to my one smiley face to make it stand out a little bit. Make this shape here and change the color. And notice the little antenna on the top. This actually allows you to rotate your shape. So I'm going to rotate it just like that. And I'm going to place it. Oops. Let me try that again. I'm going to place it right on top of my shape. So it's like a little mustache. Our first panel is almost finished, except for making the characters talk. To do that, we'll have to use a special shape called a callout. Now these shapes look like speech bubbles or thought bubbles, and they make it look like the characters are talking. Once you've drawn the first callout, you'll need to notice the yellow diamond shape where it points. Now that yellow diamond shape allows you to move the point so that way you can say that this person's talking or move it over here to say that this person's talking. I'm going to start off with this person talking. While the callout is still selected, you can also type in words you want your character to say and they'll appear automatically as part of the shape. So in this case, I'll type in my beginning of my silly joke. Once your first panel is completed, you can use your mouse to select the entire thing by clicking and dragging the white arrow tool around the object. So here's my white arrow. Click and drag around the entire object. And the whole thing is now selected. Now, what did we use to make a duplicate of that shape before? That's right, we used Control B made a duplicate and now I can move that shape where I want it and place it off to the side and now I can make adjustments to my second panel. To change the words in a panel, first of all, you click off to the side to unselect what you had just moved and to change the words in a callout, you move your mouse just after the words in the callout and notice that your mouse turns into an almost look like an uppercase I. You can then click your mouse and you get a blinking line or what we call an insertion point. You can then remove the words and you can type in the next part. And don't forget to make sure that you change the point of your call out so it's facing the other character. Once you have this done, you've gotten essentially the idea of the process, you can repeat this process over and over again until you've finished your cartoon, like so. forget that if you need to resize your callout, you can always do that by going to the handles and moving things around. Now, one final tip. If you looked very carefully, you might have noticed a special diamond shape when you click on the smiley face on the mouth. You move your mouse onto that diamond shape, you can actually change the position of the mouth so that way you can get a different reaction from him. In other words, he didn't really like the joke either. Anyway, I didn't say it was funny, but I did say it was silly. Hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial on creating your own comic strip using Google Drawings. If you create a comic strip, be sure to share it because I love seeing your work. Thanks for watching, and if you have any requests for future tech tips, please leave them in the comment section below.